Greetings WordPressers, Jackson here. In today's show, we are gonna add an XML sitemap to WordPress. So a sitemap, or rather an XML sitemap, is a thing that search engines use to what they call index your site. This allows them to know the names of the URLs, the pages, and some other bits and pieces of information. And it's pretty important that you have this on your website. And with WordPress, of course, it's very easy to do with a plugin. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do it in just a few minutes using a pretty simple Google XML sitemap plugin. So we've got our website here and we are gonna add, in no time at all, a Google XML sitemap. Let's get down to this with going to plugins and add new. And we're gonna grab our text file and the name of the plugin we're looking for. Let's do a keyword search on that. And there's our plugin right there. Let's install now. And activate that. And once it's activated, you'll see a brand new menu item under settings called XML sitemap. If we click that, we shall get our little sitemap generator dashboard. And let's give you a quick whiz through of what all this means. We've already, it's actually already created the sitemap for us. And we can look at that with uh, this link here. And that's kind of the readable view of what it looks like. It has uh, all the pages and posts, and that's what the robots need to index your site. Happy days. Um, it's just informing us that the, the engines haven't been notified yet. And we can do that by clicking this button here, but we'll do that in just a second. The rest of it is just some plugin info. Um, and then we've got the basic options, which basically about notifying Google, notifying Bing, add site URL to the virtual robot host. And then this is all stuff you don't really need to mess with, or you shouldn't really mess with. These default settings are solid as a rock. Advanced options, again, leave those all as they are. It's unlikely that you need to increase memory or the execution time, assuming you've, you've got a good uh, reasonable hosting environment and I'm assuming that you do have good WordPress hosting right automatically you can press the site map if requested by a client uh, yeah just leave everything ticked we include a style sheet that makes it human readable that's what the thing we just saw we just saw here and the override here is just to do with if your blog is in a subdirectory that is not part of the main website and in that, if that's the case, then you'll need to do a little bit of adjustment on your .ht access file. And again, that's a little bit more advanced and it's highly unlikely that you will need that option unless you've got a non-standard configuration. Include sitemap in HTML form, format. That's in case uh, some robots may need to see it in HTML rather than XML. So just leave that ticked. And the last one is uh, allow anonymous statistics uh, to be transmitted. This is for the plugin developers. And you should click, click that, send your feedback. It's free for goodness sake. Um, additional pages. Again, this is for a non-standard thing where you might have some pages that aren't actually part of your WordPress install or a separate install. Um, so again, if, if, if you get the time and you want to have a, a gander at it, totally check it out. The next one is post priority. Um, and again, just leave that as default. You can effectively disable it by clicking the top option or change it from common count to common average just to even out the post priority. But to be fair, when you create a new post, your sitemap, uh, the robots are going to know that based on your sitemap anyway. And unless you have got hundreds of new posts a day, it's not going to make any difference at all. Now, the sitemap content is again a standard set up here with the three top boxes ticked. I've never thought or wanted to include anything else. These three are really all you need for, for a pretty standard site. I think huge, massive, newsy blog sites might want, you know, if you've got huge category pages and things like that, you might want that. But to be fair, those three is what you need right now to get yourself rolling along. And again, excluded items, you know, you don't really want to exclude anything, but there could be a reason why you don't want something to be included in your sitemap that's not available publicly on your on your website the last part the change uh, or the second last part the change frequencies uh, again unless you have got like a super live blog where you're blogging twice or three times a day and 
you need to be sure that the search engines might need a bit more info to keep it up to date with your frequency, then you can adjust this accordingly. And then the last is the priorities, which I'll be straight with you. I've never changed these in any of the times I've used this and and it's never appeared to be any sort of problem with that. So that's kind of done. So let's just update the options there. There is a little reset. So if you do have a little play, you can actually reset, uh, reset them back to those, these original default settings. So all we have to do now is the one other thing. I mean, to be fair, going through all the descriptions of the options is useful, but there's really only two aspects to this plugin. You install it, you activate it, and finally, okay, that's three aspects. You click this link here to notify the search engines for all your sitemaps and your site submaps. Click that and a little box will open up and you'll get a little confirmation from the plugin that says, I've told Google about this, I've told Bing about that, I've told Google about this and you are done. I mean, it even says all done. I mean, that is it. It's actually quite a long tutorial this in reality because it literally is install activate click that button and you are good to go google xml sitemaps no excuses get yours installed today but let me know what you think about xml sitemaps and wordpress get your comments in below and if you are new to the channel please do go ahead and consider subscribing but until next time i'll see you later